Hey, what's up guys? My name is Odal from RodiPolis.com and welcome to another one of my hit film tutorials. So today we're going to do this effect. So as you can see that effect was inspired by the Matrix movies and if you've watched the TV show Smallville, there's a lot of bullet time effect going on there. So today we're pretty much going to be building that trail that you see here as the bullet wishes by in slow motion. So the first part of this tutorial is going to be dealing with importing the bullet into hit film and texturing it and lighting it. And the second part is going to be dealing with the trail. So if you just want to do the bullet trail, you can go ahead and skip a few minutes. But if you want to follow along as I do the whole project, then you're more than welcome to. So yeah, let's get started. First, let's create a new composite shot. And we're going to bring in our background layer. Now this layer was pretty much, I went outside and took a picture with my T2i just for this tutorial. So let's bring this layer. And I always like to add a blur to it because for an effect like this, you want to simulate that the camera is kind of out of focus and it's focusing solely on the bullet. So let's go ahead and add a blur radius about 15 that'll be fine and yeah so let's go ahead and import our bullet now this is one of the bullets in my new 3d weapons pack so as you can see when i import it, it doesn't really look like much right now it looks pretty non-metallic and the goal is you want to make it something that looks metal so first let's select all two of these groups so that they can move them individually from another and let's go to the material settings now you see that it didn't automatically import the specular texture and that's very important because it will really sell the metallic effect the way the light reflects on the model so let's go ahead and select that in the folder and let's change it from black let's put it about right here so you can see it starts looking shiny now and one thing I highly recommend whenever you're working with uh, metal in 3D, in 3D models is to do the specular color. It shouldn't be too white or gray or anything like that because for a gold metal like this, if you look at gold metals and like copper and things like that, when light reflects on it, it reflects uh, gold color pretty much. So it wouldn't reflect white like this. So let's go ahead and Let's change the specular color to about right here. It's like uh, between, it's like an orange, between yellow and red, kind of gold. So when we do that and we see the light is reflecting that it just looks more natural, like the light would actually reflect on a gold metal. So for the shininess for bullet, the shininess is probably fine at 10 right now. And for the diffuse reflectivity, that's just going to reflect the bullet a bit to just make it match its surroundings better so we don't really need too much of that this will probably be good at 15 and specular reflectivity that's why it really reflects the image around the scene and we will really sell your effect of uh, reflecting metal so let's put it at about 37 should be fine now remember it's a bullet so it's not a mirror so you don't probably don't want it to be too far so i think around 37 36 around that should be good so yeah, we're done with our bullet, so we let's import it. Let's drag it into the timeline. You'll see that we have a new camera now. So what we're gonna wanna do, since we just want the bullet for this shot, we don't really need the bullet shell. So let's remove the bullet shell. Go to the controls, models, and you see we have our two separate groups. So this one is for the bullet shell. Now I haven't figured out how to, I don't know if that option exists, how to simply delete part of the model. So what I did was simply put the scale down to zero. I don't know if there is an option to just delete it. I've tried pressing delete and nothing really works. So if you know how to delete that, let me know. If not, then yeah, just put the scale to zero. That way we just get rid of that. All right, and let's go to the world transform and we're going to want to rotate the bullet right here. put this at negative 90. Let's switch to top view. And let's rotate 
this a bit. So I'm pretty much going to animate the bullet going across the screen. So let's move that back actually. And let's move it away. Let's add a keyframe to the position. And let's go forward about three seconds. And let's move it off frame. So pretty much we have this basic animation. And as you can see, the bullet again went back to really looking non-metallic. So let's try to fix that a bit. What we're gonna need to fix that is first add some lights and make it reflect in the environment map. So let's choose the environment map. For this one, we'll just use the composite shot. And let's add a bit of ambient occlusion. That's just going to add in some shadows. And for example, you see the creases here that are without it anyways. One thing I always like to do also is to add a blur to the model, but like a very slight blur, like uh, one pixel for the radius and one pixel for the iteration. And that just kind of blends it in when you're compositing with live footage because something from a camera is never really as sharp as, you know, computer generated images. So it just kind of makes it look more like it fit into the scene. So that's all we have so far. Now let's go ahead and add lights. Now for the lights, you can really take your time and come up with some cool results. I'm kind of hurrying up right now. So let's just go ahead and add a cool light. And let's add another one. And for this other light, Let's decrease the intensity of it and let's see how this looks. So yeah, I can't really take more time to do it, but for this tutorial, we'll just go ahead and do that. So yeah, this is it for importing the model, lighting it and animating it. So now let's go ahead and work on the bullet trail. To do the bullet trail, now we're going to need to bring in a particle simulator. If you've watched some of my other tutorials, you know that's my favorite tool to use in hit film. I just really love it. All right, so we bring our particle simulator. Now we, what we're gonna wanna do is parent the emitter to the bullet. So let's go to the emitter settings. You see the shape, it's a point. And let's parent it to the nine millimeter hollow point bullet. So as you can see, as, it's, as it is going, the there's just a trail going on behind it. So we can work faster. Let's go ahead and delete the environment map and delete the lights and let's delete the ambient occlusion also. That just allow us to work faster. And then after we're done with the effect, we can just turn it back on. So let's go ahead and go to top view. And as you can see right here, the trail is slightly behind the bullet. So we actually want it to be touching it. So let me go ahead and go to the particle simulator settings to the position and just kind of move it forward and about right here will be good so yeah let's proceed so first let's go to the appearance before i can do that i created this layer in photoshop it's very much a blurry white ball with the edge kind of dark so I'm probably gonna put up a link in the description of this video if you're watching it on YouTube for you to download this if you want. And if you're watching it on my website, then it'll probably be right under the video. So let's go ahead and bring in this layer. And let me put it on top so you can see. That's pretty much all it is. And that's what we're going to be using for the particles. So we can go ahead and delete that. Not delete it, but make it invisible. And let's go to the particles, appearance, texture, you choose layer. Like where it says texture source and the source layer is ball. 
and that's how it looks right now yay it doesn't look like a bullet trail but we'll get there so now the next thing you want to do is make sure you uh, uncheck billboard because billboard will pretty much just make the circles keep turning to face the camera and for this one you pretty much want it to actually stay still in true 3d space and let's go to movement and for the speed you're gonna want it very low something like five or ten depending on your situation but pretty much what that does is it just leaves a trail and that's what you want to do you want to make a trail and for the life let's put life at five seconds so it can stay and that's what we're getting right now let's go ahead and work on the particles per second i'd say about 20 instead of 50 should be good i mean you can experiment with this whatever works for your situation but i think about this will be good and let's go to the lifetime properties now first we'll go to alpha gradient and we're pretty much going to want three of these now add this black just so it can kind of fade in behind the bullet i didn't want it to be very sharp and then this last one we'll put it at black again which means they're gonna fade in and then they're gonna slowly fade out as the particles die out so and we're going to go to scale and we're going to put this one a bit higher so as the particles last longer like they become a bit bigger as they go along so again you can experiment with that see whatever works best for your setting but i think let's look at this I think this will be good. All right, so let's go ahead and select the particle simulator. And before we do that, let's go ahead and control D. We're gonna duplicate the bullet. And let's select the bullet, the particle simulator, and the ball. And what we're gonna do is make them into a composite shot. So make sure you select all the layers because once you're importing your composite shot, then everything is going to be the exact same way you planned it and once you go back here you can see it is still here what we'll do is we don't need that bullet all we need is the trail pretty much so as long as we have the trail and then that bullet right here let's put the uh the bullet trail under it so as you can see we still have a bullet pretty nice we do that because once we're gonna add the displacement effect, displacement on the background, it wouldn't let us select the actual particle layer. So we create, we turn it into a composite shot pretty much so we could select it. So let's go to this control displacement. And remember you put it on the background layer, which is this. And once we go in source layer, we're going to choose the composite shot three, which is the particles. And we can start experimenting with this. Now you could just leave these at red and green, like it'll do a similar effect. And it wouldn't really matter anyways because this doesn't have any color. But you can experiment with different things like lightness, alpha, and things like that. But let's just leave it like this. You can go ahead and delete, not delete, make it invisible. I don't know why I keep saying delete. And if we start moving this to the side, Let's make it very extreme. You can see the trail that it's leaving behind, how it's kind of distorting the background. And that's pretty much what all this effect is about, is, is distorting the background. But what you notice is that it's kind of barely noticeable. And for some effects it might work, but we want, it, we want the trail to actually stay there a bit more so we can actually see it. So let's go ahead and, I don't think all that will be necessary. Let's put minus 100. Yeah, should be good. And remember when we, I went in and made that invisible, we're gonna bring that back in. After we turn that back in, we're going to click, you know, right click it, go to blend, and we'll select divide. And once we look here, it looks like the edges are kind of glowing a bit. You see there's some glowing ripples in there and that's very 
good because it just makes it look like the light is actually reflecting on the ripple a little bit and that's just gonna make it look cooler you're just gonna see it more i mean of course it's kind of very noticeable right now you might not want the ripple effect to be that much so you can actually color correct it a bit it's just that some brightness and contrast and play around with it if we up the contrast you can see how it looks like here you can up the contrast a bit and pretty much if you decrease the brightness it's actually gonna get brighter so if you want to make it less bright you can just up the brightness or you could just leave it like that and just go to the opacity and just put that lower a little bit but I kind of prefer doing it that way so you can see it's going around and when I did my effect I had a lot of time to just kind of play around with it to come up with the best settings so if this one doesn't look exactly like the other preview I just showed you that's just because I'm just hurrying to show you the techniques on how to do it and let's go back here again one thing I did was I went to sharpen but first I added a new grade layer I went to sharpen and I pretty much added a horizontal sharp on this was it horizontal or vertical I think it was a vertical and just kind of made it sharper a bit and there are also a bunch of different blend modes that you can try for example overlay might give you some different type of result but out of all the ones that I tried divide was my favorite one so I'm not really happy with how it's looking right now let's go back to the brightness and contrast and let's actually put down the contrast a bit and let's up the brightness I think right here it's looking a lot better because it's just there like you can see if we delete that and we just delete that all together that you just see the ripple but you don't really see anything at all but if we bring that back and we do that with the brightness and contrast then it just looks it's like it's there but it's not really it's kind of subtle but you really get to see the bullet trail as it wishes by so yeah so yeah that's pretty much it for the effect like i said there's a lot of different things you can do this is just one example of it and i really hope that helps you guys out to do this effect i know it's been really requested everyone really likes matrix bullet time so so yeah that's pretty much it for other things you know to do with the model you can just remember to add some motion blur so when it washes by and you probably could add a light underneath the bullet to really make it look cool so yeah thanks for watching this tutorial and i hope really, you really enjoyed it and also check out my 3d weapons pack it just came out so much some pretty nice 3d models and things like that that you can use in hit film i'll be doing a bunch of tutorials based on these 3d models and to really try to show you you know some cool stuff you can do with them and things like that so if there's any special model you want me to do a tutorial for or any shots in this trailer just let me know and you can check it out and also last thing check out the hit film hub on my website it's readypolis.com slash hit film it's very much going to be a collection of bunch of hit film tutorials from not just me but some of the best hit film tutorial makers out there so if, whenever you want to learn about hit film just go ahead and go to readypolis.com slash hit film we'll try to keep it updating every week with some pretty cool new content so i hope you'll enjoy that so yeah, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot and get happy shooting people with the matrix red time. Not really shoot people. Don't don't shoot people. Don't forget I said that.